I thought condensation had ruined my camera because instead of getting crystal clear shots like this, I was getting extremely foggy images just like these. Had I destroyed my whole setup? Well, spoiler alert, no I haven't. But here's what I have learned and what you can do to avoid having similar problems. So I spent most of last week finally photographing the absolutely stunning Isle of Skye in Scotland. It was an amazing trip that I've been looking forward to for a long time and I'm really pleased with a lot of the shots that I've got. Now in this video I'm not going to be talking about that trip, I'm not going to go through the shots that I've taken, I'm going to save all that for a proper, a proper video to do later on, hopefully full of cinematic footage and a lovely plinky plonky soundtrack underneath the whole thing. But aside from great views and really quite a lot of local ale, what I also had was a lot of weather. Now weather can of course be very problematic for your camera, particularly wet weather hammering down against it for hours on end while you wait for that perfect light to appear. But while I did have a lot of rain on this trip, I also had a lot of really cold temperatures. And it's because of that that I had the problems. Condensation forms inside your camera or your lenses when they are subjected to dramatic temperature changes. Taking your gear quite quickly from either cold to hot or from hot to cold. And I had some big temperature shifts on my holiday. Some days I had bright blue sky and sunshine, lovely for walking. Other times sub-zero temperatures, snow, fog, wind so strong you can barely stand up. Classic Scotland in the middle of April. And from my equipment's perspective, I kind of did everything wrong. For the most part, my camera gear stayed inside my camera bag, which was left in the boot of my car. And that camera bag was often just left unzipped. Now that meant that those extreme temperature changes going on outside from sub-zero at night through to warming up in the morning, my camera was directly exposed to that. If at the very least I'd have made sure that my camera bag was always zipped up tight, it's a weatherproof bag, so that would have meant that those dramatic temperature changes would at least have been a bit less extreme for the camera kept inside. Instead, my quite rough and ready attitude to looking after my own professional equipment meant that when I picked up my R5 and slapped on my new 35mm macro lens to take it out on a lovely walk down by a waterfall that I'd found, I could barely even see through it and all of the photos and video I took was just a foggy, unusable mess. And this wasn't just condensation on the outside of the lens that I could have just easily wiped off with a cleaning cloth. This was deep inside the lens and no amount of cleaning or buffing or breathing on the surface of the glass would change it. Because I did try that and it made absolutely no difference. It was fully inside the barrel of the lens and it actually got worse the longer I was out walking. And I was quite worried at this point because I wasn't sure exactly what was foggy. Was it just inside the lens? Was it inside the body of my camera? Was it the image sensor that was being subjected to this moisture problem? Or maybe it was both. I took off the lens and I had a look and that's another really bad thing that I should not have done because opening it up just exposes the internals of the camera to even more dramatic temperature shifts. Thankfully though, this happened on the last day of my trip, so what I did was take my camera back to the car, put it back inside my camera bag and zipped everything up. I drove home, I brought it inside my house and I just left the bag in my office. And I just left it alone, allowing it to naturally come back to that room temperature over a few hours before unzipping the bag, taking the camera gear out and then just putting it on a shelf by itself and just leaving it. I didn't want to put them in a warm cupboard or wrap them in towels or put them in rice or anything just yet. I wanted to just let them settle down, settle back into the room temperature in my office. So I left them overnight and thankfully when I came back to them in the morning and I had a look, everything seemed absolutely fine. And as far as I know, or at least hope, there's no long-term damage done. But I won't deny that I was quite worried. But really, it has been a good learning experience. And quite frankly, it's been a bit of a kick up the backside that I need to look after my own equipment better, particularly when I'm out shooting in wild conditions like on the Isle of Skye. 
it's important to protect your gear properly from the elements and not allow them to be subject to these dramatic temperature shifts like I did. I might have been lucky this time, but if I let that condensation build up again and again in future trips, then these fragile electronic devices simply aren't going to last as long as they should do, and that could be so easily avoided by just taking simple measures when I'm using them. So my advice to you is to not be as casual as I have been with your own equipment. Keep it safe inside weatherproof camera bags and allow them to naturally acclimatize to different changes in temperature. If you're coming back into your house or hotel or hostel after being out in cold conditions, keep them in the bag, give them a few hours to naturally warm up so they don't have that sudden shift. And that's also the same if you're coming into a cool air conditioned room from being out in an extremely hot or humid environment. Doesn't really matter. A temperature shift is a problem whether it's going from hot to cold or cold to hot. If you do get foggy lenses or foggy camera sensors, then don't panic and certainly, like I did, do not remove the camera lens. Instead, just put it aside, let it naturally warm up. And it may be that in some extreme cases, you actually need to leave your equipment for maybe a couple of days. You may even want to put it inside a sealed plastic bag with some rice or even some silica gel packets just to help bring out some more of that moisture from your equipment. But it is also important to maybe keep in mind how durable your gear is before you take it to some of these extreme places. The Canon R5 that I shoot with is weather sealed against rain and wind and, well, weather. So I wasn't too concerned about most of the conditions I was shooting in on sky. And for the most part, that was just rain falling on it. And I did wipe it down with a cloth. And I obviously made sure that all the rubber seals on the ports were tightly closed so water couldn't get in anywhere that it shouldn't be. And on much of a trip, I was using my L series 24-105 lens. And again, that's weather seal. So I wasn't concerned when it got fairly regularly covered with rain. But that 35mm macro that I was using, the prime lens, is one of Canon's cheaper lenses and it is not weather sealed. So it's not designed to be used in these kinds of conditions and getting moisture inside it like I did with this condensation over time could become more of a problem. So if you're using cameras or lenses that you know aren't weather sealed, it is worth just being that extra bit more cautious. But that does bring me to an end of today's video. It has been something of a public service announcement, I suppose, of just me talking at you for the whole time about how terrible I have been to my own equipment and how hopefully I've learned a lesson. Have I actually learned a lesson? Uh, I don't know. We'll have to see when I <laughs> next go somewhere. I try not to be too casual about my own stuff because, well, I can't afford to just replace it. Who can? But also, when you're working very quickly on location, the light changes, you do just sort of grab things as quickly as you can because suddenly the shot seems more important than the equipment. But that's not a good attitude to have because it will reduce the amount of time you actually have your camera and your gear for and it can end up causing all kinds of problems. So it's really, really worth just being that bit more careful. And I think I'm telling that more to myself than I am to you, but keep it in mind is what I'm saying. Anyway, if you have enjoyed this video or just found it maybe a little bit helpful, if you've been as cavalier as I have been about looking after your own equipment, uh, do please consider hitting that like button and also consider subscribing to my channel if you don't already. And I will see you next time.